So here's a little tour of the way that DMedia um, does CouchDB replication to your other devices on the same local network. Um, so first I'm going to go ahead and tell the DMedia service log file. Um, now, so DMedia was already running, it's already done its initial background um, stuff. And you can see that there are two services being advertised over Abahi. And the one I'm going to walk you through is this user, user couch TCP. Um, and you'll see it has this crazy looking ID. The first part is the library ID, which um, I'm probably going to rename to the user ID because that's really, it, it, it's it, in terms of Novocat account structure, this is going to be your user ID. And then the second part is the unique um, device ID or what we call the machine ID. So now I have a little netbook here that I've already peered um, these two devices and I'll walk you through in a second how to do that. But um, first I wanna show you what the, the log file looks like when it finds the other peer. So I did a DMedia CLI space version on my netbook and in a moment we should see um, this peer get detected. So new peer, you can see that it's in the same library, the, the same library ID, same user ID as up here, but a different machine ID. Um, now for this local link replication, we do push only. Um, this isn't push in the way that you think of like with a cell phone. Um, the re replicator is actually running uh, on you know the, the local device in each case, but um, it's replicating from the local da database to the remote database. And we do it in um, just the push direction. Partly this is because of uh, security reasons. Um, this is using OAuth. Um, but anyway, so we see it's starting this push of DMedia 0. Um, we've got a couple DMedia project databases. And then after that, it checks every um, 15 seconds, I think is the interval, to see if there's new databases that have been pushed from the other direction since um, the peer is initially detected. So how this would happen is if um, the other device, say, created this database, um, in the meantime, it was already here in this case, but say it created it, and it's now, the netbook is now doing push replication to the workstation, then the workstation says, hey, here's a new database, I'll start replicating it the other way. Um, we're doing continuous re continuous re replication. Um, and if you want to look at the progress of this, or kind of get some more stats, if you do DMedia CLI futon, um, this will only work right up. Oh, that's not going to work right. Um, hang on. So for some reason, Firefox doesn't, uh, that's not what I want. Yeah, yeah, that is what I want. Firefox doesn't work right with URIs with the username and password in them. I don't know why, but, um, and these username and passwords, they're uh, different every time you start DMedia because it configures CouchDB with a random username and password. Okay, so now this worked with Chrome. Um, if you go into status, you'll see that we have um, push replication on all these databases. And on my netbook, um, if I could show you in the screencast, which I can't really, um, you'd see push replication for each of these devices going the other direction. Now, the other interesting thing is if, um, tell that log again and now I'm going to do a DMedia CLI kill on my netbook and see it detects the pair removal cancels all the replication and now we go back here to status there's no active tasks um, or if I start it again To, yeah, all the active tasks.
tasks should show back up. Yep. Um, so this is we've had this for a while, and at this point, I think it's it's very reliable. It's very well tested. Um, the reason it's not on by default is that right now this is all done in clear text. So we use OAuth, so um, you know an unauthorized device shouldn't be able to replicate into your CatchDB. It shouldn't be able to write into your CatchDB. But between your authorized devices, all this is in clear text, and so it's super easy for someone to snoop um, and you know basically capture your entire CatchDB contents as it's being replicated from one device to another. So until we can do something with SSL, this isn't um, on by default, and we deliberately make it pretty hard to enable just because we don't want people to turn this on without understanding the implications. But now I'll um, show you how to turn this on. So what you need is, um, let's see, a library.json file in your um, uh, dot local shared dmedia directory. And you'll see this is this library ID I was talking about, which is going to be renamed user ID. Um, and to create that, if you go, you'll need to, a checkout of the dmedia source code. And you'll see there's this init library file. So if you run that, it will create um, you know, random OAuth tokens, random library ID, and it will write that file oops, into .local shared media. So there's the, the new uh, tokens. Um, and then basically you need to manually copy that onto your other device, put the file in place, shut down the media on both devices, and then start the media on both devices, and then it'd be peered into the library. Um, so one thing that's different about when the DMedia service starts and this file exists, it will listen on 0.0.0.0. So it's accepting incoming connections from the outside world. Otherwise it listens on 127.0.0.1. Um, um, yeah, so that's pretty much how it works. And um, right now I'm working on adding SSL support um, and even using fancy uh, peer certificate verification also, which I think will be able to land in 12.09. So then it will be safe to enable this by default and we're working on adding a you know, very easy um, UI for peering devices. Um, it'd definitely be easy if peered via your Novocut account, but we're working on a way to make it hopefully fairly easy to peer them um, even without Nova account, a Novocut account. And one reason we, we really like the local replication, for one, is it just creates less load in our servers because you know most replication can actually be done locally. Um, and then the other thing is that it means it works when you don't have outside internet access. So if you were on a set and you had Wi-Fi um, to connect your devices together, but you know didn't have internet to the outside world, or at least not fast and reliable enough, um, all the multi-device magic still works just the same. So yeah, thanks for watching.